All righty, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Ron Giovanello, and I'd like to welcome you to our Build a Plan for Your Brand Advertising Seminar. We appreciate you taking some time to join us this morning. We have a lot of great information uh, to share with you. Uh, before we get started, though, there's a packet. should be a packet. Everyone have a packet in front of you. If you open that up, I uh, wanted to draw your attention to one sheet of paper in there that we put together that's double-sided. It has the Build a Plan for Your Brand logo in the top left-hand corner, and it has a lot of fill-in-the-blank spaces. Uh, and we put this together just to help you follow along. Uh, if you'd like to take some notes uh, and you follow along with this and fill in the blanks, you'll capture all the key points uh, that we're going to go over uh, this morning. So we'll jump right in and get started. Uh, as you know, the, this is an advertising seminar. We're going to talk a little bit about advertising, and we'd like to actually start by talking about advertising. So a question uh, to the group to be able to start with, which is why do businesses and brands advertise? Or maybe more specifically, why do you advertise? <clears throat> For those of you that do. Any reasons? Get business. Get business. Yeah, that's a great reason. That's what ultimately it's all about. Some of the uh, responses I heard earlier this week in some of the sessions we did is some people want to create awareness, some people want to be known, you know, reach new customers, sell things, all correct answers and all, all, all good answers. And we're going to dive into that a little bit later here this morning. But let's kind of start with the end in mind, which is if we're advertising to create business, uh, you know, the end game here is obviously to get customers to buy to buy things. So we're all customers and consumers ourselves. We go out and buy things every day. Why do we buy things? We want them. We want them. Yeah, there's things that we want. So, you know, that, that's part of the mission why we get up and probably do what we do every day is to be able to go out and get the things that we want. Anyone else? We need them. We need things. Yeah, exactly right. So you guys, gold stars, hit the two answers. There's two reasons why anybody buys anything, right? We either need it or we want it. There's certain things in life that we need. We happen to be a giant this morning. We need groceries, right? So that's a need that we have. And there's certain things that we want. We don't necessarily need them, but you know, we may want them. We may want a Harley Davidson motorcycle. We may want another piece of jewelry. We may want a new watch or whatever the case may be. So let's dive a little deeper into what really creates then those needs and wants. Something's got to cause us to need and want something. Okay, any ideas on that? It's actually a very simple answer, and we kind of overlook it. It's called life, and it happens every single day as we live it, right? There's events in life that cause us to need and want things. We refer to them as triggering events, or you could certainly call them life events. And certain things cause greater needs and wants. For example, you know, up here in the top left-hand corner, a new couple getting married all of a sudden creates a whole lot of things that they're going to need. Or maybe perhaps a real game changer, having a baby, you know, creates uh, all kinds of needs and wants in our lives. But all of these things, these triggering events that happen, cause us to want and need things. So think for a second um, about this. And when these triggering events occur, we as customers think about what it is we need or want, and then we immediately start to think about where and go to get it here. Okay, so for example, you all drove here today, right? Drove here today. All right, so your car's parked out in the parking lot, Bob. It is. So what if I told you that when you left here and you went out, you had a flat tire? Mm. You weren't expecting that, right? You didn't wake up this morning thinking, I'm going to need to buy a tire today. But a triggering event happened, you drove over a nail on the way here, and all of a sudden you go out and your tire's flat. So, you know, once you get beyond, maybe perhaps being a little upset, you start to think immediately. We start to think, okay, how am I gonna solve this? I now have a need. And you're gonna immediately start thinking about where and who maybe to help you solve that, okay? So, think again about the triggering events that occur as it relates to your business. What causes people to want or need your product or service? And when we circle around a little later and talk about messaging, uh, you'll see why that's so important in terms of talking to the customers. So, who do they think of? Who do we think of? Think about your specific business or industry. Who do customers think of when a triggering event occurs 
that causes a need or want in your particular industry, space, product, or service. The reason this is so incredibly important is because ultimately the decision to buy something takes place in our mind. It doesn't take place in a store and it doesn't take place online. We have to think about it. So Bob is going to go out and see the flat tire and he's going to think, how do I solve this need that just occurred? And as he's thinking about it, he's going to think, who comes to mind to help them solve that? So again, our minds are these incredible things and all day long we get ambushed and bombarded with all these messages you know, throughout the day. But when we need to make decisions, we make them up here. And obviously shopping and buying things is a mental decision. And that's why we stress that the decision to buy takes place in the mind. Hence, the importance of your business or your brand being known to people so they are aware of it, so it's top of mind before, before you're needed or wanted. Because again, we decide to do something before we do it. And again, think of us, uh, think of yourself as a consumer, you know? Maybe this past weekend you went out and did some shopping. Did you just hop in the car and aimlessly drive around thinking, where are you going? I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. What do you have to go get? I don't know. You probably know specifically what you got to do, where you're going. You might even have a list of what you need to get, right? So that further validates and enforces that the decision to buy really takes place in the mind. So. Let's come back full circle to the first question. Why do we advertise? To get business, to reach more customers. All correct answers. But here's how we'd like you to think as the main reason as to why businesses and brands really advertise. And it's to become the brand or business that customers think of first and feel best about whenever a triggering event is going to occur in their life that's gonna cause them to need or want your product or service. So it's really you know, a two lane game. Not only do you need to be thought of first, but you've gotta be thought about right, in a positive way. They gotta feel good about you. There's plenty of businesses that we may think about, but maybe perhaps based on past negative experiences, we're not, we're not going there again, right? So it's, you really gotta be thought of and you gotta be felt best about. And ultimately, it really becomes a popularity contest. And the reason for that is research shows that 80% of customers are going to shop from the business that they think of first. We live in a time crunch society. We're busier than ever. Time is more important to us now than money. We're, 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 you know, we're constantly trying to do more, 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 and more. So being able to make faster, quicker decisions based on who comes to mind, who's top of mind, 80% of the time is where consumers are going to go. More specifically, you got to at least be in the top three in your industry or in your business to really be considered because there's this thing in our minds called the ladder of consideration or the ladder of importance. We're only going to retain so many. So Bob, questions on you. You got a flat tire. Who comes to mind? Triple A. Triple A. Okay. <laughs> Give me a ton. <laughs> So, hey, Bob, great, we're going to tell you. Where do you want us to take it? A service. I have a service station. You have a service yeah. station? Okay. Not, not me. Oh, one it. that you go to. Correct. All right, so you have a place that's top of mind for you. So, again, everyday customers need things, want things, go out and buy things. You know, the market is its own living, breathing animal, right? We're just living in it every single day, both as consumers and obviously as business leaders, you know, as well. So. How do you go about becoming known? Well, we believe there's four very important keys that we want to review and share with you this morning. And these four keys apply to any form of advertising. You know, they're not specific to radio, although they work well with radio, and we'll touch on that. The four keys are reach, frequency, consistency, and message. And we're going to start with reach, because reach is the most important one. Reach is kind of the, the foundation cornerstone. You know, how do we as consumers know anything about anything, right? At some point in time, 
you know, we had to be reached. We had to be exposed to it. We had to hear about it. How do we know, you know, what concerts are coming to Hershey this summer? Right? We had to be reached. We had to be reached. We had to find out. So, same applies to your business. Where can you reach enough of the right people? Now, everybody familiar with the 80-20 rule? That 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. So when we talk about defining your target, we're talking about defining that 20%. Again, think of it like a, you know, a bullseye. You're, you're, you're aiming you know, for the center of the dark board. Even though you may be doing business with people in the outer rings, right? We're not saying you do 100% of your business with that bullseye, but you really have to define that bullseye. We encourage you to look at it three ways, which we refer to as the three graphics. The first one is demographic. Most people are familiar with that term. That just kind of represents the gender and the age of who your core customer is. Maybe perhaps you do more business with men or more business with women, or maybe it is equally split. But whatever the case may be is you're gonna kind of define a gender. And then you're gonna kind of define an age group. You know, where do the majority of your core customers lie in like a 15 to 20 year uh, age span? The second graphic is psychographic. That just simply means certain lifestyle traits or characteristics about the person. So. If you're in the home improvement business, you need to reach home owners, right? That's an important psychographic to you, not necessarily, you know, renters. Uh, maybe perhaps, you know, an important psychographic to your business is, uh, you know, women that have children in the household. So whatever the case may be, you can define certain traits. And then finally, geography kind of speaks for itself. Most businesses do the majority of their business. Again, going back to that 80-20 rule, within a certain radius of their business, if you're a single standalone location, chances are you probably do about 80% of your business within like a 10 mile radius. So you really want to define who's important to you and who you want to reach. The second key is frequency. So once you've identified who you need to reach and where to reach them, the next question becomes, how many times are you reaching them? Because reaching folks just once, you know, doesn't get it done sometimes. You know, think again of ourselves as consumers. You know, we live in a hyper cluttered world, going back to that, you know, image of the mind on the screen and all these things coming at us. So we forget. It's actually called the curve of forgetfulness. We're human beings. And because of that, we generally need to sleep every 24 hours. And sleep really becomes the great eraser, kind of resets our mind. So you have to be reminding them. The third is consistency. <laughs> Consistency is important because these life events and triggering events that we talked about earlier, they happen all the time. They happen 365 days a year. You know, Bob got a flat tire today. Somebody else got a flat tire yesterday. Somebody else is gonna get a flat tire tomorrow. It's gonna to happen. People got married this past Saturday. People got married the Saturday before. People are gonna get married next Saturday. Babies are gonna be born today in the Harrisburg area. Babies were born yesterday in the Harrisburg area. They're gonna be born again tomorrow. The marketplace is its own living, breathing animal. We're just living in it. And as a business, you can't create a market. You can only try to take as much advantage of the market that exists in your industry. So consistently being there is important. Being ever present so that when that triggering event does occur, you are the business that they think of first and feel best about. You know, we like to say advertising is a lot like exercise. Even though none of us like to do it, I think we can all agree that it is most effective when we do it regularly. You know, just going to the gym once and saying, hey, check, done, and then go look in the mirror, you're gonna have to go more than just one time. And then finally, message. So advertising is kind of part science and part art. The first three keys we talked about are really the science part, right? The reach, who you reach in, the frequency, how many times you're reaching them, the consistency, but how, here comes the art part, the message. If you're doing all those things correctly, then what are you saying to them? You know, what are you saying to really become known, to be memorable, to connect emotionally, you know, with the person so that they remember you, you build trust and credibility. So we like to say, are you really speaking to the customer, being that target customer that you identified in the language of the customer, about what really matters to the customer, meaning how are you helping them solve their problem, need, or opportunity, and how are they gonna be able to remember you from that? So, we've all done some advertising, and in some cases where your advertising has worked well for you, regardless of what medium or what you use, 
you know, the reality is those four things were probably on point and you did a good job with them. And in cases maybe perhaps where you felt like your advertising didn't work well for you, you really didn't get a good return, chances are there was probably a disconnect on one or maybe perhaps even more than one of those things. Now we recognize that, you know, as business leaders, you have a lot of advertising options available to you as to where you can go advertise. Outdoor, television, newspaper, digital, direct mail, and of course, my personal favorite, you know, radio. So the other thing we'd like to share with you this morning is to share a study that looks at the eight characteristics of the best performing advertising campaigns. Yeah, sometimes it's best to just emulate what works. So this study was based upon 3,200 different successful advertising campaigns, and they identified eight characteristics that are listed here along the left-hand side. Across the top are those different forms of advertising that we just talked about. So I want to review the eight characteristics with you and see how each measures up. The eight are, number one, reaching your potential customers. So going back to the four keys, we talked about how reach is the most important. And in this study, it also proved to be the most important. Influencing customers closest to the point of purchase, meaning being able to reach them you know, right before they might make that buying decision. Providing local consumer interactions. Creating emotional connections, which goes back to the messaging key that we talked about, as does building trust and credibility. Providing unskippable engagement, which I'll touch on. Finally, nobody has an endless, anybody have an endless advertising budget in here? So being cost effective and cost efficient and then delivering affordable ads quickly because the marketplace is constantly changing and sometimes we have to adapt our messaging quickly as to what's going on. So starting with reach, it goes without saying that every form of advertising reaches people. So everybody gets a check there. However, radio is America's number one mass <coughs> medium. Radio reaches more people every week than any other medium out there, reaching nine out of 10 adults consistently week in and week out. Influencing people to the closest point of purchase. You'll see a couple get checks, not all. Radio does because radio still reaches people. We are the original mobile medium. So we can reach people listening on their way to a store. Now in a world where everybody thinks everything is bought online, the truth is only 8% of US retail sales happen online. Now I think we can all agree that that percentage is growing might go up to 9, 10, 11, 12, but you know, 92% of sales still happen in physical brick and mortar stores. You know, we're still spending 90 cents, better than 90 cents of the dollar of every dollar we spend as consumers in physical stores. Providing local consumer interactions. Again, a couple checks there, but radio provides personal and lasting connections. Because radio is live and local, we connect with people every single day. You got here a little early, you may have seen we had a slideshow rotating up on the screen that validates that with a lot of different pictures as we're out every single day in the community with consumers. Creating emotional connections, very important when it comes to messaging. This is how you really resonate with a customer. This is how your ad doesn't sound like an ad or a commercial, and you're really talking to the customer in the language of the customer. On-air radio personalities really drive emotional engagement. You know, the more engaged an audience is, the more receptive they're going to be to your message. So the environment as to where you are does become critically important. Building trust and credibility. You know, today we live in a society where we're not really sure what to believe anymore. You know, do you believe what you read online? Do you believe the news? Do you believe that Twitter tweet that comes out from somebody? What's truthful? Who knows, right? But 75% of adults agree that radio is credible and trusted. Consumers say that their favorite radio personalities really influence their opinions. So very important. Unskippable engagement. You know, technology has done incredible things to our lives. Right? But when you're buying advertising, what are you really buying? You're, you're buying access to those consumers so that you can deliver your message, you can talk to them, 
and communicate your message. So you want to be somewhere where that's actually going to be heard or seen. Did you know that two thirds of television commercials now aren't even seen? I mean, they play, but viewers don't see them. Technology has enabled us to DVR, skip commercials, fast forward past commercials, commercials come on, we go to the bathroom, we go to the kitchen, right? Or, you know, in my house, what happens when the commercials come on is all eyes go on these screens. You know, everybody picks up their phone, everybody picks up their tablet. Nobody's looking at that screen anymore. So that's what we mean when we say that, you know, and, I'm, and again, I'm not, I'm not here to condone television advertising, but just to make you aware that with radio, there's no skipping the commercials. They're there. You don't DVR, you don't record it, you don't fast forward it. Now you could say, well, you can always change the channel, and some do, but only a third do that because people have favorite radio stations, and usually it's one or two. With television, you have a favorite show, and that could be spread out over 500 different channels. So there's the big difference in terms of unskippable engagement. Finally, uh, getting down to affordability, being cost effective, again, as I said, because no one has an endless advertising budget, you wanna to try to maximize and get the most out of what you spend. Radio has the lowest cost per thousand price of any mass media. Now, what we mean by that is it's not necessarily how much you're paying per commercial, because again, you're not really buying the commercial, you're buying the audience, the access to the people that are gonna hear it. So a better way to look at it is to think for every thousand consumers or customers that you identify in that target that are important to you, how much is it costing you to really reach them? So when you analyze your advertising on a cost per thousand basis, you're gonna find that some forms of advertising are really, really expensive, like direct mail, for example. A lot of costs associated. And other forms like radio are very, very cost efficient. Finally, delivering affordable ads quickly. And this goes back to, again, being able to maximize your important advertising budget. Rather than spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on creative and production, how about you take those hundreds and thousands of dollars and put them into more reach, into more frequency, being able to reach more consumers? You know, radio can create commercials at little to no cost. We can get them turned around for you real quick and get you on the air, whether it's something new or something that you need to change. So, when you look at these eight characteristics, and we didn't create these, again, this came out of the study of the eight common characteristics of the most successful advertising campaigns, you'll see that only radio delivers on all eight of those. Only radio meets the requirements of delivering all eight for best performing results. And it's because of that, that radio delivers the highest return on investment at an average 10 to one ratio in this study because radio is the most effective and also the most cost efficient at being able to do it. So, boil it down and make it as simple as one, two, three. Radio is the most effective local advertising option to deliver on those four keys we spoke about, reach, frequency, consistency, and message, and only radio delivers all eight of the characteristics of the best performing advertising campaigns. Radio is the most cost efficient local advertising option on a cost per thousand basis. And because of that, radio delivers the highest return on investment. And it's no surprise because radio is everywhere and can reach consumers now more ways than ever. In fact, more people are listening to radio today in more different places, in more different ways, and on more different devices than ever before in the history of advertising. I think most people can relate to the old clock radio, maybe you had one of those on your nightstand, kitchen, bathroom, whatever the case may be. Not as popular now, but that's okay because technology evolves. As we like to say, a car is nothing more than a radio with four wheels. Everybody has a radio there. But now with the advent of new technology, not that computers are relatively new, but the fact that you can listen now to your favorite radio stations on any computer, desktop or laptop, by simply going to that station website and clicking on the listen live, and now all of these digital mobile devices are radios. They're not just phones, they're radios. You can listen to any radio station on your phone, tablet. There's certain streaming apps. And now one of our favorites is the explosion and growth of the smart speaker. A third of US households now have these, right? These are the new radios that are replacing these. 
And they're even easier to use because now you can just say, Alexa, play Wink 104. And Alexa will start playing Wink 104. I don't know if you saw the big news that Apple announced earlier this week, a couple days ago, that finally, and maybe perhaps, you know, this was a little pressure from Alexa, but Apple has finally decided to activate Siri now on all Apple devices that you can now ask Siri the same thing. You can say, Siri, play Wink 104 and Siri will automatically connect and start streaming and playing the radio station. Now, even though we're big advocates of radio, and maybe you picked up on that, we're not here suggesting you know it's a radio-only world. In fact, research shows that when you add more platforms to your advertising campaign, your return on investment will be even greater. For example, just adding one more platform will give you a 19% higher return on investment. Furthermore, if you coordinate the messaging, again, going back to that important fourth key of messaging, and you're saying the same things, and you're consistent with what your messaging is across those platforms, you'll get even greater return on investment as well. So when you look at radio, and in this case, adding one additional platform, digital, <coughs> one plus one can really equal three. And it's for that reason that Cumulus offers a suite of digital products. We have a complete digital portfolio. So I'd like to introduce Heather Donlevy, our digital sales manager to you, who will give you a little overview on some of our digital products and services. Heather. Ron. Hi everybody, I'm Heather Donlevy and I'm the digital sales manager here at Cumulus Media. And did you know that in fact, Cumulus is a full service digital marketing company? Maybe you didn't, that's okay. That's kind of why we're here. Um, you might also think that all media companies do digital. They're doing digital. Well, that's kind of true too, but they're not all doing it to the same capability. So we're going to talk about our products and services here and uh, go through uh, the buckets of digital solutions that we offer. So to start off, we divide our digital solutions into three different components. The first one is C-mail. It's nothing more than just email marketing. We're all familiar with that. Secondly, C-services. That's gonna be how you look online. What's your online presence? When people search for you and they find you, how do they feel about it? And then third, C-Target is nothing more than display advertising, anything banner ad related. So first we're gonna start off with email marketing and how we do that is first we develop your target list. Who do you wanna reach? What geography do you wanna reach them in? Do they need to have a certain household income? Are you looking for moms with kids? Any type of demographics, we're gonna go ahead and define that list. Then once we have that target, we push that message out into the inboxes of the people you want to reach. Then we have a goal. What is your goal? Maybe it's just to drive traffic to an event that you're having. Or maybe you need to get more, more visits to your website. So whatever that is, we're going to make sure that we have that goal in mind, that when we design the campaign and we push that message out, we're accomplishing that goal. So next, uh, C services, just as I talked about a little bit ago, is that it is how you appear online. And it's really important that when somebody finds you online, they like what they see. So the first way that we do that is gonna be with search engine optimization, SEO. Now, when you think of your website, your website is kinda of like a car. When you first get your car, it looks great. You love it, it smells good, it's got that new car smell. But if you don't maintain it, if you're not taking it and getting it service regularly, or even if you don't put gas in it, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna run. Your website is very much like that. Your website on the surface could be a great experience when somebody gets there, it might look fantastic, but if you're not doing the things that Google wants you to do to make sure that you rank, SEO is nothing more than work being done to your website on-site and off-site so that when somebody searches for you, you're popping up one, two, or three. They wanna find you. If you're not doing the right things, Google will kind of push your head underwater and say, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and let the other companies that are doing what they're supposed to do rank for your products and services, we're not going to allow you to. So it's very important that when you're working with somebody on SEL, that they know what they're doing, they're keeping up with Google and what they want, to, want you to do so that you in fact can continue to rank. This is not a quick fix, this is a fit for life type of marketing tactic. And as soon as you stop, even once you get to where you wanna be, Google changes the rules and they will slowly drop you back down again. So one of the ways to combat that is with Google AdWords. So Google AdWords are basically greasing the palm of Google and saying, you know what, I know my website is not ranking yet and I'm not necessarily doing the things that I'm supposed to do on my website, but I still wanna show up on top. So 
Google likes money. Google controls everything. You pay Google enough money, they're gonna go, okay, sure, go ahead, your ad can pop up at the top. So we make sure that we define those products and services and keywords that you want to pop up at the top four. And then when somebody clicks on that ad, that's when you pay. Google AdWords are a pay-per-click product. So you can serve essentially as many impressions, as many views, but once somebody clicks on it, that's when you're going to pay and we manage that budget for you. So next, Facebook and Instagram advertising is also a pay-per-click product, but it's not us handling your social media accounts at this point. What this is, is that those defined targets, that same individual that you wanna reach, it's taking your sponsored ad and placing it in front of them on their social media newsfeed. We are all reached by those ads if you have a Facebook account or an Instagram account. And typically you know why you're receiving those ads. They pertain to you, they make sense. So it's not nearly as intrusive as what a true solicitation ad might be, but again, it's going to be something where you can serve as many impressions as you want, but you do pay once somebody clicks on your advertisement. We can also handle your social media accounts. All of you out there probably have a Facebook page for your business, maybe even have an Instagram page. But as decision makers, business owners, you're extremely busy. And if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of the times one of the things that goes to the wayside is social media. You're not being social essentially then. In fact, if you're not being social on your Facebook pages, it's almost worse than not having a Facebook page at all. Facebook, social media, Instagram, it's about that one-on-one -on -one conversation with your customers. And when you're not having that conversation, the perception is that you don't care. It might not be the reality, but that customer's perception is their own reality. So it's very negative if you're, not, if you're not being active on social media and we can help you with that and define those posts and push those out there for you. So finally, under C services is website design and hosting. We design all types of websites, big sites, small sites, <coughs> landing pages, advanced landing pages, anything, you name it, we, we can handle for you and then we also can host that for you as well. All right, so next is display advertising. This is our C target product. And again, this is just anything that's banner ad related. Typically, these are gonna be static images, but they can also be video display ads. And we always create them in a multitude of different sizes and shapes because you know, we wanna make sure that we can reach people as many times and as many places. The ad that looks great on your desktop is not gonna render properly on your cell phone. It's just not gonna work. So we wanna make sure that we have these different ad sizes created so that when your target is trying to find you, we have a multitude of different ways that we can reach them. So. The easiest way to understand display advertising is to think of Amazon. Who's an Amazon shopper out there? Anybody? Me, I definitely am, probably way too much. So when you go onto Amazon and you look at that particular product, maybe it's a pair of shoes, maybe it's a fishing rod, whatever it is. Maybe you bought it, maybe you didn't buy it. That ad finds you. It will follow you around wherever you go. They know who you are on your cell phone, they know who you are on your tablet, and they know who you are on your desktop. So. When we're going through the different targeting tactics here with C-Target and display advertising, think of how Amazon finds you. And we're gonna put that into place. So we do this in a blended tactic because we don't have a crystal ball and we like to make sure that we have a lot of different ways that we can reach people. And we have keyword search retargeting, contextual targeting, behavioral targeting, website retargeting, mobile geofencing, addressable geofencing. And we're gonna talk through those, those tactics here over the next few minutes. So keyword search retargeting, I don't want you to confuse this with Google AdWords or SEO. Yes, those are all keyword or phrase related type of tactics, but they function very differently. Keyword search retargeting is a true solicitation. This is where you're putting your ad in front of your direct target. And how it works is that if somebody is in the market for a car, they are probably gonna search around the internet. They're gonna go to websites and they're gonna put keywords and phrases in the search toolbar on websites. When they do that, that triggers your campaign. Before your campaign starts, we sit down with you and we talk about what keywords or phrases are searched by your customers. We build that list. When that search takes place, it triggers your campaign. And then we start to follow that person because they search those keywords and it makes sense for you to advertise to them. We can do this on their tablets, on their desktops, phones, whatever. So then the next way that we target is contextual targeting. Now, this is nothing more than content that they're consuming online, meaning contextual is really just research. If somebody is buying a car, we're hoping that they're not taking a knee-jerk reaction and just going, that one looks good, I'll take it, walking on the lot and done, it doesn't work that way. They're gonna be doing some research. Maybe they're looking at pros and cons over one type of truck versus another. Or maybe they're trying to decide, do I really wanna drive you know, a Ford or a Chevy? 
or maybe they're trying to out, you know, weigh, you know, cost versus function or versus uh, safety or reliability. So when somebody is conducting that type of activity online, whether it's looking for a job or looking for a car, they're going to be going to websites, articles, blogs. We track that person. They make sense for your campaign. We're going to go ahead and deliver the ad to that individual because they conducted that research. So moving on to retargeting, this is just retargeting from your own website. Once we've got them to your website, whether it's through a radio ad, a, a billboard, a, a TV, whatever it is. And if anybody out here is anybody hiring, you're hiring. Okay. So hopefully on your website, you have a job board or an opportunity job opportunities page. So when we drive that person to that page with the, with the recruitment ad, we want to make sure that we stay in front of them because we already had half the battle. We got them there. And maybe we want to change that creative that says, thanks for, thanks for looking at our positions. We'd love to talk to you. Something with that one-on-one -on -one connection. It takes it a step further. Instead of just being a display ad, it's acknowledging, yes, I know you've been to my website and we want to, we want to do business with you or we want to talk to you about a position. So we can go ahead and put that in place for you. Now, probably what's the most exciting and the hot term right now that's out there is mobile geofencing. This is truly where we feel here at Cumulus that we separate ourselves from our competitors because we do not do zones. We use precise location targeting with our mobile geofencing. And the reason we like to do this is because this is a situation where we're working for an auto dealer. They want to target their direct competitor. You all have direct competitors, so think about who they are. If you have the capability to be able to just outline their parking lot, and their building. We're removing all side streets because anybody could be passing through there. Doesn't mean they need your product or service. It just means that they were kind of in the area near where you are, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good target for you. So we cut out all that waste. When somebody walks on the parking lot of this auto dealership or goes in the building, we ping your phone. They don't know it. Your competitor doesn't know it. But we access their phone, and then, yeah, it's great to be able to serve them ads while they're there, but what's more important is that we can serve them ads to mobile applications, mobile apps on their phone or websites they go to on their phone after 30 days after they leave that location. When they hop back in locations, they come back again, that resets. But it's a 30 days at a time. So you're not only getting your reach, but you're getting your frequency and your consistency with it as well. So we also now have the capability, if anybody out here has, who has a mailing list? Anybody have a mailing list, a house list that you use? Okay. So we know that that's really popular. Most people keep track of people that do business with them. And we have a product that's addressable geofencing. <coughs> this is where we're taking those tactics that we just talked about with the mobile geofencing and targeting competitors, and we're actually outlining individual households. So what happens is that with direct mail, that's a one, a reach of one. You're reaching them, but they're getting that one piece of paper, that, that one postcard that's going to their household. With addressable geofencing, it allows us to target every single device within the household. We can serve ads to that de particular device, whether it's a desktop, tablet, phone, even Kindle, doesn't matter, up to four times a day, and we can do that for 30 days. And any device that leaves the house, for instance, like a tablet or a phone, we can continue to serve them ads even when they're not at that household. So, you see here that really, you know, you're not paying for creative, first of all, because we handle all that for you. You're not paying for postage. And you're able to hit that address multiple times for 30 days, and then your campaign resets. Now, any of those targeting tactics where we reach somebody for you on their cell phone, whether it's through the keyword search, they typed in keywords on their phone, we targeted them with your campaign and served them ads that way. Or they were conducting research on their phone and we serve them ads that way, or they walked into a mobile geofence, or maybe they were targeted through addressable geofencing. We are able to define for you every single one of those tactics, tell you, yes, how many impressions were delivered and click-throughs and all that stuff, and isn't that great? But it's really, really powerful <coughs> that we can tell you how many people from those individual targeting mm -hmm. tactics walked into your store, walked into your practice, walked into your recruitment center, if you're having a hiring event. We can tell you exactly who got your message, not name or anything like that, but how many people received them and how many of them showed up at your doorstep. Because at Cumulus, 
we are 100% transparent on your digital results. We understand that there's a lot of digital guilt out there. It's 2019, everybody feels like they should be doing digital. But a lot of the times, you don't have the education to understand how it works, what's happening on the back end, and who's really doing the work for you. It's kind of like the wild, wild west. You probably don't really know how much this stuff's supposed to cost either. So we make sure that on a monthly basis, basis we're doing interactive reviews. You're going to be on a call in front of the screen with, a lot of the times myself, your sales representative, as well as somebody from the back end on our data team. We're going to go over every single aspect of your campaign. We're going to talk about what was good about it. We're also going to talk about what's bad about it because in the beginning, we don't have a crystal ball. And although we have our best intentions, until we get the understanding of how users are responding to your campaign, we're not going to have it perfected for you. But you're going to know it. And we're going to make sure that all this re is reviewed and there's an open conversation about how everything is functioning. Okay. So here at Cumulus Media, hopefully you can see that we are truly your one-stop shop for anything that you could possibly need digitally. So we've been talking a lot about reach. You heard Ron talking about reach. You heard Heather talking about reach. Every week, our radio stations reach over a half a million potential customers. These are people with purchasing power. Reach is the number one key to marketing success. So next I'd like to just go over a few ideas we have in our marketing arsenal. The two biggest sins in advertising today are to be boring and unremembered. So if you want your advertising to increase your market share, whether that be in legal, medical, financial, furniture, your advertising must first increase your mind share. But how do you cut through all of the advertising clutter? That's an age old question. One idea is with a musical jingle, because we all know that music is very memorable. Call home spire windows to protect and conserve. All these good stuff cheap. You should be driving a Kia from Turner Kia, Turner Kia. Some of those should sound familiar to you. Also in the room, Carla is here from Appalachian Harley-Davidson. We created her jingle as well, and they have been using it for years. So jingles can actually be very timeless at that point. So the message, which you've also been hearing a lot about, and music are really critical to your advertising results. And one last thought, one last thought. Let's think about how you learned your ABCs. You sang them before you said them. And if I asked you to recall your ABCs today, you wouldn't be able to say them. You would absolutely have to sing them. So listeners form meaningful connections with radio personalities. 87% say they make me laugh. 61% say they make me think. 51% say they are like my friends or my family. 46% say they are opinion leaders that I trust, trust being the key. So this is why local businesses love to have local personalities talk about their products and services. We call these radio endorsements. 58% of listeners tune to radio because of their emotional connection with the hosts, making them fans and making them more receptive to your advertising. So if you listen to Wink 104, you might hear Sue Campbell talking about Mount's Jewelers. Or she also talks about Belco Federal Credit Union. Anne is in the room, and Anne has been using Sue, who is a member of Belco, for about four years now, endorsing their product. If you listen to The Morning Madhouse, Steph often talks about Canine Clubhouse because she takes her dogs there to doggy daycare. And Jen Shade, uh, endorses Faulkner because she actually drives a Faulkner Fiat and also a Dodge truck. So what better person to talk about that product than one that is, who is behind the wheel? So endorsements are powerful forms of advertising. Anyone out there looking for qualified employees? Qualified being the key word there. We have a turnkey proven program that's been working for businesses across the community for the last few years. 
It includes radio advertising, digital advertising, social media, and an online job fair. And if you're interested in looking at the online job fair, it is up right now at 717onlinejobfair.com. So if you are hiring, check out our online job fair. And our Sweet Deals Trade Advertising Program allows your business to advertise without actually stroking a check. So a lot of information uh, in a short period of time, but to kind of recap and rewrap, and talk about building a plan for your brand, starting with, again, trying to emulate the eight characteristics of the best performing advertising campaigns and how radio delivers on all eight of those. And because of the cost efficiency of radio, it delivers the highest return on investment at 10 to one. And again, you can even get increased performance with greater return on investment when you add an additional platform. So starting with a radio advertising base, adding digital solutions to enhance your radio campaign and maximize your marketing. And then finally, when you coordinate the messaging again across radio, digital, and all platforms, you'll get the greatest return on investment. So we wanted to provide one example of how to build a plan for your brand if you took everything in today and thought, wow, that's a lot of information, where do I start? Well, here's a simple, easy place to start, a very popular program that a lot of our advertisers use. It starts, number one, with identifying, again, who you wanna reach. And the starting point is that because each radio station is intentionally programmed to appeal to a different segment of the consumer population. So what we look for is a good fit, a good match, interdependency between who you wanna reach and who a particular radio station reaches. For example, if your business really needs to reach men, probably the best places to find them are on 105.7 The X and CBS Sports Radio. So once you've identified the station or stations, this particular schedule gives you 30 second commercials, 30 of them a week. You can see in all different time frames and throughout the entire week. Furthermore, those commercials are across all of our distribution <coughs> platforms. So whether they're listening on a radio or regardless of what device or how they're listening, they're going to hear your message. It's gonna go out across every single platform uh, that we distribute the radio stations on. And then we added in that additional platform, in this case, some digital display advertising that you heard Heather talk about. 75,000 impressions a month. So you can go back to those six different targeting tactics that Heather spoke about, and you could even use a blended approach of a couple of those different tactics, depending on what the objectives are, what you're trying to accomplish. So we wanted to share this as one example, as a starting point. And if you feel this makes sense for your business, you wanna take a look at this, you could talk to your uh, sales representative about it. We are offering special pricing for those that took the time uh, out of their busy schedules to join us today. If you don't think this is right for you, that's okay. There's plenty of other ideas, plenty of other solutions. Maybe it's a Penn State football sponsorship. Maybe it's a customized digital solution. Uh, the point we want to convey is we're here to help you in any way uh, that we possibly can. We do business with hundreds of businesses every single month, and we're sure we can find something that would work right for your business and for your budget. So with that being said, I do want to thank you for your time today.